Well, we followed the track to the end, and we have to do a little bit of backtracking by about a kilometer or so to get back to what I think is a track that'll continue west. The beauty of this coastline just, just keeps giving. Back in this Wagunya Conservation Park, I think we were out of it for a second, and then we're back in, because it's like there's multiple pieces to it along the coast. And this road's pretty well used and pretty corrugated. It's very neat looking. What did you say earlier? Like a moonscape, but mm -hmm. you've never been on the moon, so you couldn't be certain. I think this is cool. It's very cool. It's different altogether. Oh, what do we got here? Is this the end of the line? Just pulling up for a bit of a lunch break and there's dragonflies flitting everywhere. They're beautiful. It's Cape Adieu. And here we are behind. Someone dumped a blue drum there. I'm trying to film these dragonflies. They're beautiful. There's the actual cape itself. Once again, South Australia turning it on with this coastal scenery. There's a little dead end four wheel drive track that got us here. There's our chairs set up with that view. Woo hoo wee! Once again, I'm not a fisherman, but surely there must be something in those waters off this beach and off those rocks. What do we have for lunch, hun? Sally! Hey, nice one! The lettuce is starting to go a bit brown, so I'm <laughs> Cool. Some nice greens, that's good. We need that. You don't win French with salad. We finished up lunch and we're still in the Wagunya Conservation Park. Well, we're a fair distance from the coast now, probably a couple of kilometers on this dead straight track. We can see it for kilometers in front of us and it just keeps going and going and going. Again, nobody's run on this one for a while. There are wheel tracks on it, but they're weeks old. <laughs> the civilization comes on the radio. <laughs> that chatting that you hear on the radio is the highway, the air highway, which is not too far off from us on our right hand side. There is the coastal track. We're on it. We got off that other straight one. Yeah, we got off the straight sucker and we're heading towards the coast, as is evidenced by a giant ocean in front of us. Old fence line. Okay, that's good. I think this is the one. It goes down and then runs along the coast. If it hasn't dropped off into the Southern <laughs> Ocean. <laughs> okay, we got our coastal scenery back. Nice. That's cool with the track picking along the coastline like that. <laughs> you don't want to have a micro nap for a second, do you? No. Amazing. The coastal cliffs of the Nullarbor. This is just how I had this track pictured in my head. Me too. The track's only a car width away from the cliff here, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not another car width over. Yeah. I can't see how eroded it is underneath. <laughs> <laughs> they do tend to be undercut. Mm -hmm. I wonder who the original dude or dudette was that cut this track. That's a pretty impressive sight. Those waves pounding against the coast for eons. That southern ocean is just pounding into the cliffs of the Nullarbor. I don't know whether the GoPro is going to pick that up, but it is just solid salt spray out in front of us. It's a pretty impressive sight, even though you got those little salt Pac-Man munching on the steel of our car. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Steel. Still in this Wagunya Conservation Park. It is an impressive park, and it is long. I know I keep saying it, but there has been nobody on these tracks for weeks and weeks and weeks. This is not a trip that you attempt solo without being super prepared. 
gotten into a little section here where all these little hedges or sedges or whatever they're called are in flower. It's very pretty. We're actually coming off of a decent sized hill here. And those are the sand dunes obviously in front of us. They're huge. They are massive. Still on a clearly defined track, albeit unused or not used for a very long time. Still getting radio traffic from the air highway. That's Tasmanian looking to it me. It does look Tassy like, doesn't it? I don't know why. <laughs> That's just what came in my head. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we're getting into proper trees and green now. Those big, big white dunes are just immediately here on our left. Oh, my mirror just got knocked in. Yeah. The dunes are slowly creeping in and it looks like they're trying to reclaim it. They're definitely traveled, just not very often. And we thought we would be meeting more people on here. At least I did in my mind. I thought we would be running into people every now and again, but we haven't run into anyone. No, not a soul. All we saw today were the surfers. Yeah. And they're on a mission that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Their eyes are only for the ocean. This is cool. It's very cool. So it's different altogether. Oh, what do we got here? Is this the end of the line? No. I think it's the end of the line. Do what happens to the right? Yeah, it does go to the right, but I think that's just people turn, turn around. around. It's gotten reclaimed. Yeah, the dune has come in. We are set up camp at the end of a dead end sand track. Here's the sand track and it used to punch through and I know it used to punch through because I saw a video by Stephen Fisher of I don't know, is it all off-road adventures or off-road TV or something like that? And he managed to punch all the way through. But this does not go through anymore. I know when he punched through, the dunes were starting to eat the track. They have completely eaten the track now. Bummer, too. I wanted to punch all the way through. But it looks like we'll be backtracking for a little bit. Ah, well. Back into camp. Time for a beer. It's well and truly raining now. We just set up camp where we got sea bead. Terry's making a fire before everything gets soaked. At least that wood's been drying for about a millennium. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your glasses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> getting soaked but the front of the truck was all covered in flowers little bits of the flowers that have been in bloom that we've been driving through on the bushes I'm gonna walk up to the top of this June field with Jill and we got something to show you this is not easy stuff to walk up it is soft 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 it's just rained so there's a bit of moisture on it but underneath that little moisture crust it's white powder there's our camp. That was a feat climbing up that wet, very soft sand. Looks really cool though. And if I turn around the other way, Terry's walking toward the ocean. You can hear the roar. Have a look at this. The sand dunes and the shifting sands have taken over the eucalypt forest, buried it and killed it. So this is a graveyard of an old forest. Unreal. And there's Jill taking some photos of some cool plants and things. So pretty. That's really cool, isn't it? All these gum trees that have been buried by the sand and killed are all skeletons. The dunes are taking over. You can hear the ocean roaring on the other side. Well, hun. Shall we try and climb those dunes out in front of us? Jill said that that looks further than it is, and I reckon she's right. <laughs> yeah. If we can just climb up to the top and look at the ocean, that would be, that'd be great. Yes. I don't think there's a right line or a wrong line. I think we just head straight for it and start climbing. Each step you take, you can't tell if it's gonna be deep or shallow or what, and there's like a wetter crust on the top. It's really cool.
<laughs> well, there's the end of the forest, and we are at the start of the desert. Okay, let's do some climbing. Yes, I'm panting. This is this is tough work. We're heading towards the roar of the ocean, but you get really disoriented here and sort of spun around. The sand is clean as anything. There's nothing on it. Not a leaf, not a bug, not a stick. Oh, I thought I would have saw the ocean over this one. Nothing. Not yet, hon. <laughs> the, the ocean's getting louder though. <laughs> I think we'll get it on the third one. One, two, three. Hopefully this will give you a sense of the angle. Jill's walking across the face to the top. Look at that. Is that crazy or what? To go, Jill, go! <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> I wasn't even videoing yet. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> That's knee deep. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. That went up to my knees. <laughs> and so we're camped at the edge of those trees. I don't know whether the camera can see that or not but we can finally see the ocean. So we're not even halfway across this dune field yet. But we'll go out to this little gravel pit here. It's really coarse, coarse sand. There's actually some animal turds. Looks like camel to me. And here we are in the middle of these hard packed gravel pit. That's very cool. We've been walking for ages and the ocean is still way out there. We've come across little rocky areas, camel poo. It is an absolutely amazing area. Owl bees, you know, cocoons made out of sand. Little rock sand. I don't know what they are. Well, that's as far as we're going to go. We've walked, I don't know, at least a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. And it feels like we haven't even gotten any closer to it. You doing tear i am uploading our first youtube trip video oh cool it is called the beginning okay <laughs> that, that's earth shattering it is, isn't it? okay well you're tucked in here with a little fire behind you yes i am very nice we've had a sh hot shower and we've had dinner yes both were wonderful Stinky's doing his work out there. He is doing his work out there. He's we really, he's been invaluable. He really has. He has. He's 
been great. I just airdropped Terry all my trip videos and yeah, we, we can... just let the kids know where we were. So in case, because we're in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. if there is any dramas, um, they know exactly where we are What's using the... what three words? Yeah, it's great. It is. It's pretty cool. So we've got a mouse in the truck. I think it's only just one. We're in the middle of the Nullarbor, so we can't get any rat sack or any rat traps or anything like that. We've seen him running around on the tailgate, so I've gone old school. I got a fry pan propped up with a stick with a little bit of bread under it, and if luck's with me, he'll come out there, he'll grab the bread, and I'll be able to trap him underneath that fry pan. How do I like my chances? I give the mouse 10 to 1 odds that he's going to win. Well, we're leaving our Sand Hills camp, and what are these Sand Hills called, Jill? Chalganippi. Chalganippi Sand Hills. Okay, thank you. It rained a good portion of last night and a good portion of our stay at this camp. So we are soaked, the track's soaked. Weather is supposed to be starting to fine up today, which is a good thing. We still have our passenger on board. We've met him a few times now. We're gonna try and catch him this evening if we can with the old pot and string trick like I showed you guys earlier. I think he went to bed for the day. I think he did, yeah. A lot of sticks. There is a lot of sticks. This track is fair overgrown. Don't come down this one because you're not gonna make it through unless you cut a new track. And to do that, you'll need yourself a chainsaw and some shovels and probably a lot of tire plugs too. And some paint protection. <laughs> well, look what we have here. We've got a camel. Hi! I can smell you. Gonna go somewhere, do something? Not far from the Chilippi Sand Hills. We've just come out of our camp into the clearing, and here is a camel all by himself. So that was camel poo we saw up in the sand hills yesterday, and he's just staring at us, curious. Well, we made it back out to the track that heads in the same direction that we were originally traveling. In fact, where we camped, that intersects with this track here, about 200 meters from where we camped. So if we could have just pushed forward for another 200 meters, we would have joined up with this track. But the creeping sand dunes had another idea for us. It's actually some decent sized trees along here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. This looks to me like the forest that was buried by those dunes, like it, this kind of thing. It does, absolutely, yeah. This is how I pictured it in my mind. Yeah. This would have been a nice camping spot too. It would have, yeah. We are approaching the track that we were camped on, and our camp is to the left of us, only about oh, 300 meters or so. And there it is. That's the track to the left that we were meant to come out on. Well, we got sea bead on this little track here. I'm going to have a look at the main track, in quotation marks, and just walk down it and see whether that sand has sucked it up, but if it is... We're going backtracking again. And we were looking for that track there, which we couldn't find, and that track there, which we couldn't find. But we did find a track here that's running parallel to those two. So we're trying that at the moment. That's what it looks like in front of us. Somebody's been on it uh, within the last 12 months, I guess. But we don't know where it's going. I don't know. It's, it's you know, this is going to be one of those spots that you could be block just before the end too. Yep. Those dunes are creeping. They are. The track according to the map does pull away from the dunes though. But you're absolutely right. You could get blocked right at the very end. The bushes are trying to take back the track too. They are. Not just the sand. They are and they're having a moderate amount of success.
rubber pants. I don't want to damage anything. I know. <laughs> you might be wondering why I've got the antenna still up there, because it does fold down on one of those folding brackets. But that antenna is about 100 mil higher than the rooftop tent. So I can judge the clearance on the rooftop tent by where that antenna is hitting. out look like we've been through a tornado well we're still bashing through this track heading towards the dingo fence a pair of water tanks sign of civilization we are by no means through though there could be a CB up in front of us at any time around any corner well, this track is a meant to T-bone with another track just up here. If it does, we might have made it. If it doesn't, then we got a long ways to go back. A long way. Well, no, I think we're going the right way now. I think we might be, huh? Holy. Holy hell. Yeah, I think that's the Waganya ruins. From the old station. Yeah probably what this conservation park was named after. Good place to have a stretch, have a wander around. So this is the Waganya ruins in the conservation park. It always seems to be the chimneys that are left in these places. And there is not much left here. Wonder when the last time that that hearth was used. All the walls have collapsed. Ceiling of course has collapsed. That looks like the cowl off a of Model A or Model T Ford to me. Yep, absolutely. There's the dash. Dead march fly. That's cool. Some old farm implement of some description. And check this out. An axle and the spokes off of a wagon. That is cool. There's the old water trough. That's pretty deep too. You know, it's silted up at the moment, but it's probably four feet deep. Another one bites the dust. Old side valve engine block. Cool. Well, we are still on this bush bashy track. We're on the track heading towards the dog fence beach. And we are getting much closer to the coast now. We can see the water and the tracks turn from gravel into a little bit more sand. And we can see sand hills now. Yeah. These sections always get me a little bit worried because if the track is untraveled as like this is, the sand dunes can fill it in very, very quickly. And I always just worry that they will be blocked off completely. And then we've got a, a serious amount of backtracking to do through a pretty rough country can be done, but I'd rather not. We're going west. I'd like to keep pushing west. Well, we're on the dog fence beach track and we're heading out to the dog, dog fence cliffs to hopefully have some lunch. We are at the dog fence cliffs and we're having some lunch. March flies are particularly vicious here. Watch Terry stomping his feet around, getting attacked by March flies. Wanted to get him having a real good slapping session.
little picnic spot, except for one minor thing, <laughs> the March Fly Dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to get up on the dunes to see if there was a good slapping frenzy, but you didn't have one. No, I've been stamping. Yeah, stomping. I've seen a few stompings, but not your like absolute spack out stompings. No, they ate me alive when I had the drone in the air. <laughs> I put these guys about as bad as we saw them on Fraser that one time. But these guys are a bit worse than the Fraser ones because the Fraser ones sort of land and wait around for a bit before they nail you. As soon as these guys land, they're on you. They nail you. And it hurts like hell. All right, as you say, let's blow this popsicle stand. That looks pretty ominous with the track just sort of disappearing into the ocean. Ah, we turn. It's the not knowing how far it's eroded under the cliffs. <laughs> That's the <laughs> dicey part. Because it's pretty eroded. It is. Well, here we are. We made it to the dog fence. That's heading off in a northerly direction. And that's the terminus of the dog fence in the south. Let's go check it out. No, no dingo's going to get around that. I wouldn't have wanted to have been the guy who actually put that fence in there. <laughs> Jill's over at the terminus of the dog fence. Obviously, we got the truck in the background. And these are the cliffs of the Nullarbor getting smashed by the Southern Ocean. Hard to believe this has been going on for millennia and these cliffs are still holding up. Jill's gonna put a rock on the can, the dog fence can. And check this out on the very end of the point here. There's a big ass eagle's nest. How cool is that? I don't know why he's got fishing twine and whatnot in there, but it's definitely a bird nest and it's got to be an eagle out here. We are running up along the side of the dog fence at the moment. There's a track on the east side and the west side. We're on the east side at the moment and we're looking for a gate to get over onto the west side. There is one up here a little bit further. It is marked on the map, so that's cool. But it's nice to be on a, a decent track now <laughs> without all the scratches and scrapes and branches and sticks and everything. I think this dog fence is the largest man-made structure in the world, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, certainly it's the longest fence in the world. Yeah, I'll do a fact check. Dog fence, double gate. Here comes your stock. Through I come. <laughs> How to tell you're from Queensland. Bare feet. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Double gated. Okay. We are now on the dog fence track proper, heading north towards the air highway. That's pretty cool. The dog fence straight as a die off into the distance. I wonder how often they patrol this fence. There's a dog fence maintainer dude watching this channel. Let me know. Fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was saying what I wonder what I wonder what the dog fence does at the highway and it looks like it's just a big ass grid. Watch it die. Die. Oh, they're everywhere. Here they come. Oh my boob. Kill. I got it. I just whipped it out the door. Oh, there's one landed on my head. Dear Lord. <laughs> Have you had enough of the March of Flies yet? <laughs> They're in the truck. They're everywhere. <laughs> They're donking me in the side of the head right now. They're, trying, they're landing on my smacking arm. Here, get it. <laughs> he got it. Ah, one just bit my shin. See? Oh, okay, there. we are on the air highway heading west, and the cabin is full of merchandise. We're on our under attack. <laughs> They're after us everywhere. Got it. Got it. I got his body. He's going out. Ow. Oh, he's on your arm. Ready? Yep. Got it. Nice. 